If you are under the impression that your Linode instance may unfortunately have been compromised, there are a few things that you can do to gain information from it. Maybe you want to pull logs or you want to understand what some of your options are when it comes to recovering from such an incident. So in this video, what we're going to do is explore a few possibilities that you can consider if you feel like your Linode isn't acting quite right. So here I am in my demo Linode account, and I have three instances right here. And I'm going to pick from these instances to use as examples for this video. Now, if you have a situation where you think you might have been compromised, or you know for sure you were compromised, it's important to know what your options are. And perhaps the easiest option is to simply rebuild your Linode instance. Now, of course, keep in mind, if you rebuild your instance, that wipes out everything and starts it over from a default known good state, which could be just starting over from scratch, building a brand new Debian instance, for example, or you could actually restore a backup that you have on your Linode account, preferably a backup that would have been taken during a time that was before you might have been compromised. But the thing is, if you do rebuild your instance, you will most likely lose data. And that includes log files that are valuable for trying to find out what exactly happened in the first place. But anyway, what I'm going to do is rebuild one of these instances so you can see what the process looks like. So what I'm going to do is rebuild this Fedora instance right here. And here is that instance. And on the upper right hand side of the screen, we have this little menu right here underneath the three dots and rebuild is one of the options that's underneath this menu. So I'll simply click on that option. And then up here, it has the verbiage rebuild Linode Fedora. Fedora is the name of the Linode instance. So if you are rebuilding your instance, you better make sure that the name that you see here is the name of the instance that you want to rebuild to make sure that you didn't click on anything on accident because once you rebuild your Linode instance, you can't undo it. So I'm going to continue. So I could choose one of these options right here for how I'd like to rebuild the instance. The default is from image. But if I have a stack script that I'd like to start from, I can go ahead and choose one of the stack script options here, but I'm going to leave it on from image. And here I can choose the actual image that I would like to use. And this instance was running Fedora, so I'm just going to leave it on Fedora and choose the Fedora 33 image. Now, if I had my own images, they would show up here. And actually, I do have a few images, as you can see. So if I would like to start it over from one of my own images, I can do that. But I'm just going to rebuild it as it was with Fedora 33. And I'll type in the password that I would like it to have. And then to confirm that I am actually going to rebuild the instance that I think I'm going to be rebuilding, I'll need to type the name of that instance right here, which again is Fedora. Let's go ahead and rebuild it. And we can see that the status has changed to rebuilding. You can see that up near the top. And I'll let that run, but you get the idea. Rebuilding your Linode instance is one option that you have at your disposal if you think that your instance was compromised. And rebuilding it is a good way to be sure that there's no trace of whatever it was you may have found on that instance. Now, another option that you have at your disposal, especially if you would rather not rebuild your instance until you at least understand what exactly happened in the first place, you can actually boot into rescue mode using the Phoenix Live CD that is actually built into your Linode account. Now this time, I'm going to use Debian as the example. So I'll click on it. And now what I'll do is access the menu. And we have a rescue option right here. I'll click on it. And what I'm going to do is leave all of these options at their default. However, if you wanted to copy some data off of the Linode instance before you delete it, then it might be a good idea to actually attach a different disk to it. You can create something like a block storage device. You can attach that here, format it, 
and then you can copy all your configs and things that you want to retain to that disk. So that way you don't have to completely start over. You'll at least have your config files. And maybe you might even want to grab those log files too, especially if your security team wants to investigate those. And if you don't even have a security team, maybe you're curious. Maybe it'd be fun if you looked at those log files to try to find out when the compromise actually happened and how it happened. But anyway, I'll click Reboot into Rescue Mode. And it says that it's rebooting. And what I could do is open up the console here to follow along. And when this Linode is finished rebooting, since I asked it to reboot into Rescue Mode, then that's what it's going to do. And sometimes it takes a few minutes, but as you can see, it's now booting into Rescue Mode. And now it's finished. At this point, I am actually running in Phoenix, And Phoenix isn't specific to Linode. It's a handy utility that you can use to basically rescue your Linux system, or at least it'll give you access to it without booting the normal distribution that is installed on the main disk. So what exactly can you do in rescue mode? Now one thing you can actually do is copy the entire disk to your local computer. And this is pretty cool. In order to do that, what we'll need to do is set a password for root. We're already logged in as root, but we'll need to set a secure password for root. So that way we'll be able to access this via SSH. So I will type in the password right here. And again, and now I have set the password. In order to access this server via SSH, SSH needs to be running. So let's start it up. And then we could check the status. Let's make sure that it's actually running. And it is. So now what I can do on my local computer is pull down an entire image of the hard disk of this Linode to my local machine. And this is pretty cool. So I'm going to grab the IP address of this instance. There it is. And I'll open up a terminal. And then what I'm going to do is type SSH. The user is root at, I'll paste in the IP address. And again, this is the IP address of the Linode instance that I'm trying to rescue or at least grab data from. And I'm going to execute a command, so dd, then the input file. I'm going to set that equal to slash dev slash sda, the main hard disk. I'll press space. Then I'll end the double quotes just like that. And I will pipe that into dd yet again. Except this time, instead of using another input file, I'm going to set the output file, so of. Then I'll type my home directory. And I'm just going to name the image file linode.img. So let's take a moment and look at what I'm doing here exactly. So I'm going to SSH into my Linode instance, the one that is currently in rescue mode. As you recall, I set the root password and then I started SSH. And that's how I'm able to SSH into that server from my local computer, which is where this command is being run from. And once I do actually access that machine via SSH, I want it to run the dd command. And I'm going to set the input file to slash dev slash sda, the main hard disk of the computer. And then I'm going to pipe that into the dd command of my local computer and set the output file I'm going to set that equal to slash home slash j linode.img. So that's where I want this image to be saved. I'll press enter. And I'm not seeing any output here, but don't worry, it is actually working. If I open up a new tab and then I list the storage, you can see that I have the linode.img file right here. And then if I run ls again, 
we'll see that the size has changed. So this is going to take a little bit of time. It's copying the entire disk local here to my computer. So I need to let this run. And then when it's finished, it's going to return to the command line. So I'll let it do that, and then I'll be right back. So now, as you can see, the copy process has been completed. On my local laptop here, I have the completed image, and it took quite a while for this to copy over my connection, which was a little bit slow today. But it was a 25 gig disk, so I needed to copy 25 gigs from my Linode instance down here to my laptop. But now that I have the image down here locally, I could archive it. I could inspect it to see what exactly happened. I can go through the log files, things like that. And I can also mount it in a directory local to my machine so I could go through and browse the file system. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to make a directory in my local working directory. I'll just call it Linode. So I'm going to type sudo because in order to mount something, I need root level access. And then I want to mount that image. For options, I will type loop. And then the name of the image. And finally, the name of the directory that I'd like to mount it to, which is the one that I've just created. And if I execute the mount command, we can see the second to last line shows that it is mounted. And we can see it down here. So it is attached to the directory that I've created. And I can see the contents right here. So what I could do is go into that directory and then perhaps into the var log directory. I'll press enter. And of course, I can see all the log files. So whatever I need to do to investigate this Linode, to check the log files, whatever I think is appropriate, I can now do without actually disturbing the original Linode, I have a full backup. And even if I didn't have a potential security issue, having a backup is a very good thing. I have a local backup on my laptop, so even if there wasn't a security concern at all, I could actually use this to reprovision a server if I'd like to do that. If nothing else, I have a backup. Now, if I am actually using this image for forensics and investigation, I could actually delete the Linode that has been compromised, if it was, which will make sure that it's not going to disturb anything else, that there's no botnets that are connecting to it or anything like that. I can just dispose of it. But there are other examples in the article that matches this video, if you'd like to check that out. But these are some of the things that I like to do if I feel like my instance has been compromised. Then I would definitely want an image backup like I've created here. And rescue mode in general will give me additional options. Using the Linode dashboard, it's very easy to rebuild your instance as you saw earlier in this video. But if you want to take a backup as well for forensics or something like that, then I showed you the process for taking a copy of your entire disk and storing that locally as well. I hope that was helpful. And if you like this video, make sure you click that like button. That lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. And I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.